destinies to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Wendy Williams. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angelic reiki, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through the lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation, or angel oracle card reading, with the wisdom of my guests, like today's guest, Wendy Williams, who will be sharing her story about how she raised her vibration and frequency to 5D in 2013, healed her emotions and learned to follow her intuition guides, something that you can do as well. Now, Wendy Williams is a past life adventure guide. She helps people release energy that no longer serves them so they can lead happier, healthier life filled with purpose. So examples of energy that that don't serve us include pain, anxiety, and depression. Now, Wendy is a certified spiritual teacher and Reiki master energy healer, as well as a hypnotherapist specializing in past life regression, which obviously is close to my heart. She's She's a published author who actually voices her own audio books. Now, with testimonials such as Emotionally, I feel back on track and more focused. It's been months since my session, but I still feel the positive change that took place. I highly recommend a session with Wendy. To Wendy is very kind and supportive. She is especially pleasant to work with. Her knowledge and level of professionalism in the field of hypnotherapy is remarkable. She is intelligent, open-minded, and can converse with a high degree of knowledge about spiritual matters. So, without further delay, hello, Wendy, and welcome to Angels and Destiny Show. How are you today? I'm doing wonderfully, Ray. Uh, thank you for having me as your guest. It's a pleasure to be here. It's lovely to have you. So, before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Wendy and I want to be part of this conversation. So, please do not be shy. So, Wendy, why don't you tell us more about yourself and about your story and how we can release energy to embrace our life purpose? Absolutely. Well, I woke up in a very uh, surprising, interesting way. As, <laughs> as I share with people, it just it felt like the most ridiculous way possible. And I was leading this conservative life and working um, for a large healthcare system. I'd worked in healthcare most of my career. Um, I'd earned an MBA degree um, uh, when I was young, when I was 22, and I was divorced with two daughters. So spirituality, energy, it just really was not on my roadmap until 2010. And what happened uh, 10 years ago now is I uh, was divorced and I went on to Match.com to meet a nice guy. And I ended up meeting the soulmate that had the contract to wake me up spiritually. Ah. And he did so by introducing me to Michael Newton's journey of souls and to past life regression because he had already had several past life regression sessions of his own And at the time when we met, he was prepping for his second Life Between Lives. So uh, what what a funny, surprising way to wake up spiritually. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Match.com lists that as one of its benefits. (laughs) I like that. Yeah, I think think, think that's a brilliant benefit to have. Well, I think think the point is that our guides and our angels, they just meet us wherever we're at and they just so want to love us and support us. And I think consciously connect. So that's what, that's what came up for me. And I had a near death experience back in 1997 
And that was the first time that I met my angels consciously. So that was just a really, really big deal um, when they, they saved my life. Um, but I didn't start to really put the pieces together until, um, you know, quite, quite a few years later in 2010. And then I was able to start to make sense of that near death experience and what had happened. Oh, wow. So I'm, 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 I mean, were you, were you, 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 when you, when you had that near death experience and you kind of like go and got to connect with the angels, were they still there? but you just weren't consciously working with them or they just kind of like you, you just shut them out or they weren't there? Um, that's a great question, Ray. I had, I had a sense of them being around, but I just, I didn't know how to connect and I just didn't, I didn't have the frame of reference and I just frankly didn't have the time to research it, to take classes, to try and figure it out because I was uh, a mother with two babies. I mean, my daughters were born two years apart and I always worked full time outside the home. So, you know, they're just, there's only so many hours in the day and I was just so scrambling and so busy uh, for so many years that I think that's why it just was kind of like, you know, on the back burner very gently. And then when I had more time and when the time was right, that's why I met that a soulmate that I discovered so many lives with. Um, and we, we discovered 19 of them, which was just wow. this crazy, crazy number. Um, and to try and wrap my head around all that, you know, is this real and what do I make of it? And it, just having your belief system change so profoundly and so rapidly, it, it can just be very discombobulating. <laughs> it's like you just, it, it's like an earthquake and you just, don't quite know where to stand. Um, so there was there was a lot of a lot of reading and a lot of self reflection and uh, just having that uh, because I got so interested in Journey of Souls. I mean, the minute I read that, it was just like, oh my gosh, here's here's the answer book to the question I didn't know I was supposed to be asking. It just it just felt like such a deep truth to me. And it was just so um, interesting to imagine. I mean, the minute I started reading it, I was like, I know I'm supposed to have my own past life regression session. And I did have one in 2011. And it was so fantastic to be able to release anxiety. I mean, a lifetime of anxiety gone in two hours. Yeah. It was just incredible. So to be able to release that energy that doesn't serve us, it was a really big deal um, because then I was able to start to uh, figure things, figure things out. So, yeah, that, that's pretty. And it is amazing how books come into our lives um, that can can literally change, change it as soon as we read it. Absolutely, absolutely. And sometimes we have the book in our own home and we haven't read it. And our guides can give it a nudge and like all of a sudden it like literally falls off the bookshelf at your feet or <laughs> or you go to, um, I don't know if you have the itty bitty um, book boxes that we do in our neighborhood where it's, it's similar to um, uh, like a large mailbox almost. It's a little community community excuse me my kitty's excusing himself here sorry for the noise. Um, midnight's changing his position here and so there's this little itty bitty book box and you can just like open that or in the library um wherever and just all of a sudden there's this book that just like jumps out at you or maybe you see it online you know you're looking at amazon or barnes and noble online or whatever and you know you're supposed to read that book <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just, I just, I just love the way they come out. Or yes. you're sort of like just, just skimming online or something, and something will catch your own. You go, oh my god! And then it just, it, it takes you down a, a completely different rabbit hole. 
Absolutely. Um, particularly, I find it important to pay attention to those intuitive hits. If something keeps coming up multiple times, you know, different friends mention something to you and it's like the same book or the same movie or the same class or workshop, or you see it multiple times, I really feel that's our guides, um, you know, and our own intuition just humming, our own higher self saying, pay attention. <laughs> Yeah. So we've so, so you've you've met your um you've you've met met your your soulmate who you've had um uh, many lives with. Yes. How how did the journey then then continue from 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 there? Well, the you, way did, you said two thousand ten, you had your own past life regression. Right. So he and I met in twenty ten, and then I went for my first past life regression, and he actually found the practitioner because he wanted to go to her himself, but. She had a long uh, waiting list at that time, and he wasn't willing to wait the six months, um, but I was. So I, I, um, it actually took me about a year to go see her because I needed to save the funds and you know get get ready to go, and certainly looked at um, other people too. But I was very drawn to her, um, and I just knew she was the right person. And we had our you know little little phone appointment to get to know each other and see if expectations made sense and. Um, all that. Um, and then I did, I did book with her. And then that session was so um, amazing, as I said, not only releasing anxiety, but we cleaned up things from earlier in this lifetime, that I just hadn't realized how much they were still weighing on my shoulders. And they just really didn't make sense to, you know, have them be such a big deal. So being able to release some things from earlier in this lifetime, and I also was able to see two past lives. So to accomplish all that in two hours, that was just mind blowing to me. I was so grateful for it and just felt so uh, energized to want to continue. So I then booked a Life Between Lives session with her um, for a year later. Um, Because again, you know, needed to save that money, needed to prep. And I didn't even know what the prep looked like. (laughs) At that point, I mean, I was just starting to wake up spiritually. I didn't know how to meditate. I didn't have any spiritual practice. And I was very, very busy with full-time work and with two children. Um, So, but it was the right move for me. And just, you know, the things started to, to come together well. And that that life between lives was just amazing. I actually did transcribe my audio recording from it because I always recommend people have an audio file to listen to. Because when you hear your own higher self speaking through you and when you hear your guide speaking through you or whatever you know positive um, being of light that might come through, um, it's just, it's amazing. And it was, It was the proof that I needed as a very skeptical, left-brained MBA. Um, It just was the proof that I needed that this wasn't smoke and mirrors. It was very real and that I actually could um, access my subconscious, you know, in a very gentle, um, uplifting way. That was just, that was amazing to me. So when I transcribed that four-hour Life Between Lives, it was 65 pages of information that I had not known. And just, you know, the healing that came through from that and the new new information um, that that came through from that, um, it just just was amazing. So the next year... um, let's see, so that would have been uh, 2012, I had two sessions with a Dolores Cannon practitioner for quantum healing hypnotherapy, because I was really drawn to the physical healing that I had been hearing about that could occur during that. And I had a lot of physical things that I wanted to improve in my health, Uh, because health really is wealth. Yes. You know, if we don't if we don't feel well, um, nothing else really matters. So it's just a big deal to be here on the earth and be in a body and to just um, be as healthy as we can. Um, so I had those sessions and those, again, were so helpful and so amazing that at that point I knew I was meant to train as a practitioner. So um, 
originally I kind of backburnered it. My left brain came in again too hard. And I was in this place of, oh my gosh, that's going to be super expensive and take so much time and energy. Instead of asking what could be easy and right about it, I went to the obstacles kind of place. Mm -hmm. um, so I backburnered it. Um, and then I realized what I was doing because I was thinking, oh gosh, I need to wait until, you know, my kids are out of college. This is going to be this tremendous deal for me to retrain in this way. And when I finally just stopped myself and realized I'm looking at this wrong, <laughs> instead of saying, you know, what's right about this, where's the ease and grace, where's the flow? Um, once I did that and just literally said to my guides, I'm open, I'd love to do this. This sounds wonderful and magical and so appealing. And I know it's part of my life purpose. So once I just said that within a week, I suddenly get introduced to a fantastic um, gentleman um, in the UK who had trained with Dolores Cannon, and he was setting up his own hypnotherapy um, training center, and he was looking for just 10 students to work with, that he was going to work with one-on-one, -on -one, give a fantastic price to, that were going to be his beta students, and give him a lot of feedback on the training materials. And because I had a lot of that background um, and just he and I so hit it off in the first phone conversation, um, he selected me as one of those students. Wow. And it was like, boom, boom, boom. Um, <laughs> so it's a great example of getting out of your own way. Yeah, because I, th I think we 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 do tend to put um, obstacles in a way, and I, and I just love the way you, you sort of like you know it's kind of like you have to reframe it. Oh, yes. you know why can't I do it? Why can't I do it? Okay, what would be the benefits if I was doing it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, just just show me the way, make it easy. I'm open. Um, I'd love to do that, and just just um, you know ask ask for help. I think we just, we don't ask for help often enough. We can just get, you know, very um, kind of plodding and just very stubborn um, and try and left brain our way through everything in life. And it's pretty darn exhausting. Um, and it's not very fun. <laughs> so you just want to open, you know, open more to the possibilities and to the magic. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool, and um, you know, very good advice for 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 people out there. So you trained um in the Dolores Cannon Quantum originally, yes, yes, and then same type of thing. Um, an opportunity came up to uh, train with Dr. Brian Weiss, um, who authored Many Lives, Many Masters, and that was a, a more significant investment. Um, yeah. But again, almost immediately, um, rather than uh, just just signing up for that full week training out in New York State, when I live in Seattle, um, he suddenly was going to be in Portland, um, Oregon, which is just a three hour drive from me. And he was doing one of his general public um, one day seminars. So I thought, well, why don't I go down there to Portland for an overnight and just meet him in person and do do that? Uh, you know, do that seminar and see what it's like. And then that'll tell me whether I should invest yeah. um, in the full week training and travel um, across the country to go do the, the full week training. And the, the Portland um, seminar was so just so wonderful um, with the general general public that I then went and did the practitioner training. Oh, wow. That's, um, that's amazing. So it, again, it was one of those looking out for the synchronicities about what was yeah. happening. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then the same thing happened again um, a third time. And I just think it's, you know, limitless uh, because I had looked into a little bit into the Michael Newton training and it wasn't quite right for me. So I did not uh, choose to go that route. I think it's a wonderful route, um, you know, for many people. Um, but what happened was instead I met one of Dr. Newton's original students and she had um, worked with him for many years and had actually been one of the trainers for the Newton Institute and she was um, doing things on her own um, and I worked with her um, instead um, and was able to um, train for the Between Lives. So, uh, you know, it's just, again, it's just, it's just being open and 
I think your, your path becomes more clear and your life purpose becomes more clear uh, once you uh, do commit to having some sort of daily spiritual practice, which for a lot of people can be as simple as 15 minutes of meditation or, or yoga or drumming or just or or dance or just whatever just lights you up and just um you know really speaks to speaks to your soul just doing something for yourself like that that lets you connect it can be a walk in nature um yeah. you know i mean so many people just um just that's that's their best that's their best connection yeah yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, amazing, it's amazing what you can do in little time. You know, I often say to people, you know, fight, you know, where people go, I, I don't have time to do it. Do you have that five minutes in the bathroom by yourself where, where you have before the kids get there or anything? If you've got that five minutes, you, you, can, you can do something just to breathe. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you do have to carve it out for yourself, even if you are um, taking that time and hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> Or go in and hiding in, in your, your car, um, you know, for a few minutes of privacy, either at home or if you're at work, um, wherever it can be. Or I also have a fair number of clients who are just super, super busy with, you know, families and jobs and, and taking care of their home and their animals, etc. But you can meditate as you're falling asleep at night. Um, and just it's a wonderful way to get more restful sleep, to get better sleep and then just have more energy, uh, you know, during the daytime. It's just a great way of clearing your mind. And that is that is very valid um, if that's if that's where you get to um, take that time. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's just it's just trying to find that time to to actually take take that five minutes um, and just to get yourself in a nice in, in a nice state. So, so you've done all this training. Um, and, and did, did you know then what you wanted to do with it? Or were you just kind of yes. like, I'll do the training and see where it goes? No, I did know that I was meant to um, work with clients. I did know that I was meant to offer past life regression sessions. So I did that um, part time for several years. So, you know, nights and weekends um, as I was working, working the day job. And then a um, little over three years ago, um, summer of 2017, um, I was laid off from my um, job and just took a really deep breath because I knew <laughs> I knew that was the moment um, that I was meant to um, start doing this full time. And particularly because I also was doing more public speaking and because I was writing because I love to write, but I'm not the world's fastest writer because it's it's just moving a lot of energy as I write, not only for myself, but for mankind. So I'm not someone who, you know, publishes the book of the month. Um, it's it's more like um, every every two years or so. I'd like that to be, uh, you know, it's moving along more more quickly, but the books are taking, um, you know, a good amount of time and energy, um, you know, as you kind of learn, well, what's involved with self-publishing and what are all those steps? So, yeah. So, so, um, so, so you do audio, um, audio books. Do you find that easier than doing written books? Uh, that's a great question. So that was a surprise to me. Um, I, I really struggled with getting the first book published because I had written a lot of fiction, but I didn't have any training and it was hard to structure it all because there was so much information coming through that I wanted to write about because I was learning about so many of my own past lives and having so many spiritual experiences and my way of processing and, and just uh, letting go of that and learning from it was to write about it. Um, so I just had this massive amount of 1,200 pages, literally, wow. um, which is going to become a trilogy. But I just I just didn't have the skill set to organize it, and I just didn't know what to do with it. So I just saved it and, you know, backed it all up. And then what happened was how I did actually get the first book completed again. Um, <laughs> Spirit really had to uh, intervene and what happened was I did a session um, with my former boyfriend that I met through through Match. And I did a session for him as the client because he was having significant pain. Uh, he'd been a lifetime athlete and he'd broken his neck. Hey. And yes, he'd had a great surgery, 
but he was still having so much pain from it um, that it was really interfering with daily life. And he didn't want to be taking painkillers. He wanted to find a way to get to the true uh, core issues with it and to be able to release it. And because he'd had past life regression sessions um, and did have that belief system that there can be a lifetime or lifetimes of origin leading to um, leading to pain or leading to anxiety or leading to depression or whatever might be going on for the person, um, I asked him, would you like me to do a session for you and to facilitate and see if we can get to the root of this and get you more comfortable and just get you to the point where you can, you know, enjoy playing recreational soccer and have driving be easier and, and all those sorts of things. And he also really struggled to connect um, with his higher self. He didn't have a good sense of his higher self. Uh, and he just didn't know how to connect with his guides, even though they were all around him. And they were actually really tapping on my shoulders pretty hard and would say, tell him this, share this with them. And it's like, oh my goodness, I do not want to be someone else's middleman. I am not a psychic medium. I want people to be able to connect with their own guides and do your own work because you need to filter that through your own yeah. experiences and your own common sense. So that was another reason um, that we decided to do this session. So uh, we scheduled it and um, about a week before we actually did the session, I was just kind of tuning in with my guides and saying, you know, are we prepared? Are we doing everything right for him to have a great session? And my guides said very clearly, this is going to be the most difficult uh, session you will ever facilitate in your life. And I was like, oh, goodness. Okay. Um, then I have to ask the obvious question, am I meant to do it? And am I meant to do it at this time? Is there anything I can do to prepare? Um, and they just, they said, you know, go ahead. Yes, you're meant to do it, but do use two forms of technology to record it. And I was like, what? I've never thought to do that before to like double record like that. And I did share with him, okay, you know, here's, here's what I was told. Do you still want to do the session? Cause don't let me talk you into it. You know, you need to be really wanting to do the session for it to be successful you know, for your higher self and guides to be lining up. And he's like, oh, I really want to do it. And that's okay that you got that message. Let's just figure out some way to double record. Yeah. So we did. So I used, um, at the time, this was years ago, at the time I used my MP3 recorder. Yeah. And I also had a brand new iPhone and I had realized there was a recorder on it. So I pushed play on it, having not used it before, not having really tested it, not having any yeah. idea how long it would record for. The MP3 player was blank, even though it had always worked perfectly. There was nothing on the recording and we tested it. And all there was, was us wow. both saying, you know, testing one, two, three to get the volume good between the two of us. There was nothing on that MP3. And the implication of that was I couldn't, I couldn't download it to his computer for him to have his recording because uh, there was nothing there. And so I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I sure hope it's on my phone, because he was thinking that the session was about two hours. I asked him at the end, how long do you think we were talking and doing the session? He says, oh, my gosh, it, it was longer than I thought. It was two hours. And I said, look at the clock. And he was very surprised because it had been four and a half hours. Wow. And what's important about that is that means that there were two and a half hours of information that he was not aware of where he was speaking as his higher self or he was speaking as his guides and really working through new information. Um, so I really wanted him to have that info, but I couldn't download it from my phone because I had this huge file. So I take it to the, I take it to the phone store and say, how do I download this file? And they look at it. They're like, how did you get a four and a half hour file on here? That this phone, it's not capable of recording a four and a half hour file, audio file. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I just pushed play. <laughs> so again, it was really spirit at work. So, but I couldn't hand my phone off to him. So what I, I took a big breath and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't sort out what he knows and doesn't know. I don't have any way of knowing that he needs this information. 
So I offered to just type it for him. I said, I'm just going to do a real quick and dirty transcript. It won't be, won't have quotation marks. It won't be perfect. It'll be, you know, your name and what you said and my name and what I said. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'd be really grateful for that. Would you please do that? So I spent a couple hours doing that on a Saturday and then I took a break and I just kind of scrolled back up to the beginning and I looked at it and Ray, I was shocked because it had a title. It said Regression Healing One and it had my name as the author and it said Table of Contents and I'd written notes to myself that I did not remember writing like to create a forgiveness resource guide at the end of the book. And I'm looking at it going, oh my gosh, you're a book. <laughs> I did not know you were a book because I was just so blocked in getting the books done. And so I finished the transcript. I sent it off to him and said, what do I do? Are you comfortable with me sharing this publicly? And he said, oh my gosh, yes. Will you please get out of your own way and start writing and publishing? I'm supposed to help you do this. I guess that's how I'm going to help you is you use my session. So that's what became the first book. Very wow. surprising way. Amazing. Yeah, that is that is wow. Um, the, the, that came out just just from just from one session with somebody. Yes, exactly. And I, I knew it was to be a series. Um, and I, I just have continued to write, um, of course, of course, with client permission and with their identity blinded, but I've continued to write in that series. So I'm getting ready to publish the second one, um, Regression Healing 2, uh, Joe and Marilyn. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, that book being published um, this year. Oh wow! I'm definitely look out for that. So, so is it a story with fictional characters using all the um, past life information, or is it about that per that person? Regression Healing One. That series is nonfiction, and it is the actual client sessions. Um, as well as the other information that kind of downloads um, around those, um, you know, so it kind of gives it more, more context and it weaves, weaves the sessions together. And then what happened, so I had no plan of making an audio book. I got off, off track from your question about that um, because that, that's a whole nother world. I mean, just getting published and figuring out all those pieces of self-publishing was, was a big deal, as I said. And there's a, there a pretty um, big learning curve, but it was so assisted. And a friend kindly created the cover for me. She also did the formatting because I didn't know how to do those things. Um, and she created it both the, for the physical copy and for the Kindle copy because it takes different formatting. Um, and she got me started, um, you know, on those pieces. And just, you know, to have that so graciously offered and different friends offered to be test readers and just kind of helped take the place of what a content editor would do. And my mother kindly did um, the, the spelling and grammar check. Um, and she also did the call outs of, oh, my goodness, you've used the same word four times on a page. Or, or you know, Wendy, this is too woo woo. What does this mean? Um, because you can kind of get into the shorthand speak in a session yeah. with a client because the two of you know what you're talking about, but to have it be a book to share with others and have it make sense for them, some backstory did have to be put in. So she helped call out, you know, what was missing um, to make it be a book. And then um, what I realized was, oh my goodness, this would be pretty easy. I just started hearing from my guides, audiobook, audiobook. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's what's involved with that? You know, how do you get a book made into an audiobook? Do you yeah. hire somebody to voice it for you? You know, where do you publish it? You know, where do all those pieces come together? And because the book was written um, with just two main characters and then a narrator filling in the pieces, it only had three characters. So I realized um, this would be pretty easy to voice myself if I just had a male friend who would read 
uh, the male client part for me because I didn't feel I could do the dialogue back and forth between the two voices with so much, you know, back and forth dialogue. So I drafted a friend um, and he kindly agreed um, to do it with me. And we, we practiced at home. I tried to master um, audacity um, to record it myself. And I discovered can't do it, can't push all those buttons while trying to voice the book and not, you know, have all this background noise of home of kitty jumping in and out and the doorbell rings and yeah <laughs> home is not a sound studio no so again um serendipity um came in again and i had hosted my own uh, radio program and i realized that uh the lovely um woman who i had done that through had her office set up with some sound studios in it some sound rooms and she employed sound engineers uh, because they hosted some uh, radio programs. So I contacted them and said, have you guys ever had someone um, do an audio book with you? Could I come in studio and work with one of your sound engineers and they push all the buttons so that I can just concentrate with my friend on giving a clean read? And they said, oh, that sounds interesting. We haven't done that before. Let, that, that would be a new line of business for us. That would be fun. So um, we did that. We did not know what we were doing. And I'm glad we didn't know what we were doing because it would have been kind of daunting because I learned afterwards how many hours it typically takes in studio to get a clean read on a right. book um, based on the running time. I had no idea what the running time was even going to be. But he and I had practiced at home and decided to go in the studio and do it. And we recorded the book, which has a three hour and eight minute running time. We recorded it in four hours, which is incredibly wow. short and fast and efficient. And that's important because you're paying for studio time and you're also paying for then the sound editing that has to come in afterwards to be able to meet um, Audible, um, to meet um, their, their sound requirements, to put out a quality product. Um, and luckily, um, Audible, which is uh, ACX, which is part of Amazon, they give good, clear specs. I didn't understand them all, but I printed them out, handed them to the sound <laughs> engineer and said, can you do this? Do you know what this is all saying? <laughs> you know, of, of the very technical pieces of how much, you know, what, what, um, what uh, different highs and lows you had to, had to hit and just to have it be a quality product. So he helped make that happen. And that's how the first, the first book came together. Wow. And then the second book, because I did double back and I did get a fiction book published. I did publish a fictionalized uh, story um, of my own past life in colonial America uh, in the 1600s, because I had such vivid memories of that. And there was so much energy to move that I had to uh, write a full book about it to release it all and to tell that story. And that one, I went in studio and recorded it completely um, on my own, um, myself, because it mainly was in the voice of, of the main character. And then I, I had enough confidence I could do the narrator and do yeah. the little bit of dialogue that was from, from um, other characters. So just a really great experience. Oh, amazing so so the next book you're coming out that's a written book that's not a audio book yes so my process is i publish the books um as as written books so they come out as paperbacks and as kindle ebook format um, on amazon and then i go in studio um, and then i do the recording um, of the book at that point so and i've also found interestingly that it just improves the writing to be writing it knowing you're going to record it okay. because it just kind of forces you to because uh, we can write um we, we can get very you know william faulkner with this like paragraph that never ends and you don't that's not how you speak so you know the writing can get kind of stilted unless you're very very skilled at it and when you read your own book aloud, picturing, recording it, it, I find it's improved the writing because it's shorter, it's more to the point, it's easier to understand, it's easier to flow with. 
Okay, this is, this is, a, this is a good little tip to uh, to 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 think about. You know, if, if you if you're if you're writing a book, is is actually read it and then see if. That... Oh, absolutely! Read it aloud because you will pick up so much that just isn't. Um, you know, that you'll want to, to change up. And there's also like Word has a function now that you can push a button and have it read to you and hearing it in that weird little machiney voice. <laughs> again, it helps you pick up, oh my gosh, that sentence just went on forever. Or, wow, I left out a point there. So this isn't, you know, this isn't following. Um, you, you can't, you, you just pick up on things like that. <laughs> Brilliant. So, <laughs> so, so, so you, so you've, um, you, you've done all this training. You've, you've got the, you've, you've got, you've got the books and that. You know how, you know. So, was it through the past life stuff that allowed you to, um, in, you know, to em, embrace your life purpose, or was it the books, or was it a combination of the both? It was, it was a combination. Um, frankly, I just kept having so many spiritual experiences that I just didn't know what to make of, and I really needed to learn how to ground my energy and clear my energy. Um, I needed to learn how to align with my higher self, and I also had a fair um, bit of karma um, to resolve and I also needed to open my kundalini life force energy fully. So all those things started really cooking in 2013. And I didn't know what was going on um, because I had not yet found a spiritual teacher um, and I didn't have my energy basics down. So um, for me, it led to a lot of fear factor. Um, it led to a lot of um, things that, you know, a lot of nightmares, just a lot of, um, of psychic attacks, just a lot of things I was not enjoying um, and was still struggling with, with health issues, um, was struggling uh, romantically, was just struggling um, in a lot of relationships. So um, more and more of my past lives were coming in and I was doing my very best to release the energy from those and to understand them and write them down. Um, and what happened at that point was it was March of 2013 that I was referred to a spiritual teacher because I was just over my head. I was flailing and fortunately was referred to a spiritual teacher. And she was amazing and helped me start to clean up my energy. And within about three months of that, um, I knew I was starting to hear about ascension symptoms and I didn't really know what that meant because I wasn't clear on what all this 3D, 4D, 5D stuff meant. I mean, yeah, I could get online and read about the dimensions, yeah. but I hadn't equated it. Originally, I thought 3D meant height, width, and depth. <laughs> it was just being, I, I was like going plain geometry about it. <laughs> I just, I didn't understand it was our level of consciousness. I hadn't connected those dots. So, but I had heard about ascension symptoms and I just was feeling exhausted and wacky and overwhelmed and couldn't sleep and food didn't taste right. And I finally just Googled um, looking for an article about ascension symptoms um, because I wanted to be able to look at what some of the resolutions were I could consider. Yeah. And I found a list of a hundred ascension symptoms and I went through the article. I, I physically printed it and I checked them off again, looking for solutions. I had 97 of them. Wow. So it was like, wow, no wonder this feels so intense and so crazy. And I could literally feel myself vibrating for the first time. I felt like I was my own mini earthquake all the time. And it was not comfortable. And again, I was struggling to ground my energy and clear my energy and raise my vibration um, in a more manageable way. Because uh, it was just, it was, it was like being run over by a steamroller. And I, I did really um, connect with, though, I really loved the idea of the higher self, of the soul, of that intuitive wisdom, and getting aligned with that. 
So I was working to do that and to just consciously um, call in my higher self and to align there. And I also really cared about doing my work and, and learning my lessons. So I worked with a spiritual numerologist to look at uh, whether I had any karma. And it was quite interesting because she asked me the simplest question. She said, where do you really struggle? Um, that's probably where there's some, you know, un unlearned lessons. And that's probably where you have some karma. It's not punishment. It's simply unbalanced energy to bring you back to a certain person or situation or location so that you can finish it, so you can master it. I mean, often the lessons forgiveness and gratitude and letting go. Um, and those were not things I was good at. So um, I did the session with her and we were able to specifically identify where I had karma. And she just gave beautiful antidotes. Okay, here's what you need to do. Here's some suggestions. You've got lots of heartbreaker karma. So here's how you can clean it up. And you've got lots of karma around abusing power. Here's how you can clean it up. And that was about the time where I started to understand what soul contracts were. And I realized that my soul contract with my former boyfriend who woke me up was to break my heart repeatedly until I stood in my power fully without abusing it. And that's that's a brilliant contract. It's not yeah. fun to have your heart broken repeatedly, but it helped me clean up my heartbreaker karma. And it also, it was his incentivizing me and pushing me and supporting me and shoving me when necessary to step forward, to publish yeah. the book, to get on radio to just do those sorts of things to, to step into my power um, in the right way. Cause I was shirking it. I was stepping back because my reaction to learning, Oh my gosh, I've abu abused power before and I've actually got karma for it. That's not good. So I kind of shrank into myself and it's like, well, I won't get any karma if I don't use my power. Therefore I can't abuse yeah. it, but hello, come on. You know, we have to be in our power. We've got to have appropriate boundaries. We've got to speak up for ourselves at the right time in the right way um, to, to, to live our life purpose. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that started to get resolved. And then I very suddenly, with a single meditation, not knowing what I was doing, um, I was drawn to a kundalini uh, meditation. So I purchased... Um, the the cd and it was meant to be done you know gently many times um very slow and very sane but what i noticed as i was listening to it was within two or three minutes i was already ahead of where you were being coached to start to visualize the kundalini energy rising up the spine and i was already ahead of it and it just like blasted out of the top of my head so strongly and I went so out of my body. I'd been meditating in my bedroom. I'm sitting cross-legged on the floor, um, which I didn't usually do, but I think it helped me get more grounded that day. And it just blew out of my head. So top of my head as I left my body and I'm like looking over the neighborhood and then I'm looking over the world and I'm looking over the galaxy and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm too far up. This is scaring me now. So I went plunked down <laughs> in my body. But it was just such a force blasting open that crown chakra with that kundalini rising. I literally thought I blew a hole in my roof in my bedroom. <laughs> and you, I would have passed a lie detector test on that. I was absolutely convinced for about two or three minutes. And I'm looking up thinking, oh, my gosh, look at the sky. How am I going to explain to my insurance agent, we've got to repair this big hole in the roof. <laughs> How am I going to explain it to them? Because clearly the explosion came from inside. <laughs> I can't say a tree fell on it. No, no. It was so funny that I was went to this 3D place of how do I like get the insurance to fix my house? Well, there, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with my house. <laughs> but I just kept going through experiences like that. And the same thing, I'm trying to align with my um, higher self. 
I kept getting these messages, go to the right. You need to go to the right. And I didn't know what that meant. And I kept meditating and I'm like trying to ask my guides, what does that mean? You know, be an in integrity, take the high road, make the right decisions. You know, what does that mean? And they just, they would just like, kind of like do one of these, like you need to figure it out. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. So I kept trying to work on it and I asked two different friends who were psychics and I said, I keep getting these messages to go to the right. Do you know what that means? And both of them had the same exact reaction and they just kind of smiled and they said, you're doing great. We know it's overwhelming, but just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to figure it out. I can't tell you. You need to figure it out yourself. You need to go to the right. And I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, so, and during this time period, I got this offer to get some free um, aura software where you can see the physical um, aura around you. And they let you put in just two photos um, as an example, as a sample to then hopefully, you know, purchase their software. So I put one in and it was a picture of me on vacation. I'm at my, my dad and stepmom's house. And it's just this lovely picture on the lake. And I'm standing up on their balcony with the lake in the background, just, you know, looking relaxed and happy on vacation. But you could see this yellow aura around me, but it wasn't physically around me. It was to my right. I still didn't get it. I still didn't put the, pick, the pieces together. I'm like, what does that mean? Why is my aura there? That's weird. Why is my aura not around me? This software doesn't really work, was what I was thinking. Well, the software worked perfectly because what it was, it was my higher self and it was to the right of me. Right. So the way I finally literally got it together was hysterical. It's Monday night. I'm putting the trash out. How symbolic. I'm taking out the garbage. I'm releasing what I don't need. And I've got a very long gravel driveway. So I'm pulling these big cans and big rolled um, bins. I'm pulling them a couple hundred feet down to the curb because um, I'm on a long private drive. I'm the, the third of three houses. And I put them out at the at the curb. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, kind of dust my hands off. Okay, good, that's done for the week. And I start walking back to my house. And it was twilight, and I'm kind of like looking up, going, oh, isn't the sky lovely? And I'm just, you know, enjoying the moment. I'm almost to my front porch, but I don't get there. I'm suddenly thrown like 10 feet to my right, and I'm standing in front of my lamppost. And I'm looking at the lamppost going, how did I get here? Because I did not walk here. And I, at first I thought, oh, there was an earthquake. That, yeah. What else could move me? Like if I could replicate that move, Ray, I would be a professional athlete. You would be paying me millions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there in astonishment, looking at the lamppost going, how did I get here? So I just stood there and I kind of held on to it for a minute. And I just asked my guys, how did I get here? Why am I here? And they said, congratulations. You're now aligned with your higher self. We moved you to the right. Ah. <laughs> it's like, okay. I wasn't expecting that to be quite so dramatic. <laughs> oh my God. That is, that is, a, that is, a, that is amazing. And, and really, how all really that journey amazing. you went through to being thrown to the right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I, by then I'd raised my vibration by aligning with my higher self, quite literally, uh, by resolving, transmuting my karma um, and just really learning those lessons um, and just apologizing to individuals I'd harmed. And I couldn't do that all face to face. This is not a 12 step program. This was through meditation. You know, this was through prayer. This was through writing, um, those sorts of things. And I'd opened my Kundalini um, and that should be done safe and sane by working typically with a meditation instructor, spiritual teacher, yoga instructor. Um, it's not meant to blow the roof off the house, but that, <laughs> that was that was the way I, I went for it. Um, and at that point, I then and again, I'm like just feeling all this 
vibration going on in my body, just like I'm being shaken all the time, which was, as I said, exhausting and hard to sleep and hard to get good nutrition. I just kept trying to drink more water and just, you know, feeling achy and crappy um, all the time. But I just tried to have faith that it was for a good reason, a good purpose, and that it was going to be a stage um, that I just needed to get through. So that was the mindset I tried to apply to it, even though I did not understand it, um, because I was just barely starting to work with a spiritual teacher, as I said, and just didn't have the background for it. And then what happened was I had a lovely um, free free weekend, which was unusual. My daughters were going to be at their dad's house. And they had left um, on Friday evening to spend the weekend there. And he was going to drop them at school on Monday. And I had nothing on my calendar. Highly unusual. I mean, yes, lots of things needing to be done, but nothing scheduled. And usually on Friday night, I was super, super tired. But this Friday night, I had this energy surge. It's like, it's time to write. So I just started writing and I knew it was getting very, very late. I mean, I'd get up once in a while and you know, get some water and walk around. But I wrote through the entire night, which I had never done in my life. But I just you know, gave myself permission to do it because I had this beautiful um, energy surge. And when I finally stood up in the morning going, oh, my gosh, I've just been sitting too long. And I turned around and looked out the window. It was this perfect, gorgeous dawn. And the sun was just coming up and just these gorgeous rays of light everywhere. And I felt this overwhelming gratitude. And I literally felt my knees, which I had never done in my life. And I started receiving the sound activation from source that was the final step in really raising my vibration up to 5D. And I could feel my heart just like opening and opening and opening. And I loved everyone and everything. And it was overwhelming. And I'm just literally on my knees on the ground with the sun coming in on me and just tears pouring down my face. And that was that was the moving up to um, 5D. I mean, it's, it's a process. It's a phase. You go back and forth. It did happen one more time. I had one more sound activation. Interestingly, they were both Beatles songs. Um, and they were just like a heavenly choir. It just, I could feel it like healing me from the inside out and just changing everything. Um, so that was all just absolutely amazing. Um, and... I sat with that for a couple of weeks, but I was still having lots and lots of symptoms that I just couldn't manage. And then what happened was just, again, the most mundane thing, like like t- taking out the trash on a Monday night. I went to one of um, my daughters was having a sports banquet at school. So I'm there in the high school and I had carried in um, a crock pot because it was potluck dinner and I'd carried in this big crock pot and it was heavy and it was awkward and it hurt my back a lot carrying it in. And then I sat on those, you know, not comfortable um, yeah. school school seating or, you know, picnic bench type thing um, in the lunchroom um, for this couple of hour sports banquet. And I went to stand up. I could not move. I was in so much pain and I was hearing, you need, you need help. You need a healing session. You've moved up, but you need a healing session pronto. So this was a Tuesday night. So I called my spiritual teacher the next day on air because she hosted a radio program. And I said, help. I'm in so much pain. I think it's really a good thing. I feel like I'm raising my vibration, whatever that means, but I'm really in pain. So she immediately said, oh, my gosh, you've blown out your central nervous system etherically. So we need to do some repairs. So she spent a few minutes with me on radio and then we scheduled a one on one session. I mean, in that one on one session, a day or two later, um, an ascended master came in to really heal my heart, really heal my body and to offer to work with me on a daily basis. And I'm not special. I am not, anyone can do this. And I encourage everyone, you know, find your path to consider, does this sound right for you? You know, to consciously raise your vibration, your level of consciousness. 
and just, you know, have those amazing resources come in and help you. Because that's what really helped me start to get on my life path when she was able to um, do that healing session for me that day and help me get stable um, at 5D. Wow, that's absolutely amazing um, how how your journey has sort of like gone um got gone along that you know it's 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 really fascinating you know and when you were talking about the book earlier um vivian kind of like went wow it was and it, it was it's like a, you know amazing um with 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 all that had happened um now as you know i do guided meditations and angel card readings and each week i like to ask my guests what they would like me to do so, Wendy, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to pull an oracle card for you and those watching or do a mini guided meditation? Oh, I would love to see an oracle card, Ray. Brilliant. I like that. And funny enough, I have them in my hand. Fantastic. <laughs> so, so, as usual, I'll give the cards a quick lens and a bless. Now, of course, when I do the um, cards, I don't predict the future. Um, everything I do is um, working in the present. Um, so even though, um, like Wendy, I do past life stuff, it's to heal your past life so that you can be fully present. And when I work in the future, if you know what your future is, you're not worried and you work fully um, in your in your present. So so this is for what, for what um, uh, everyone needs to know for their high school at this moment in time. So what does Wendy and everyone who's watching this needs to know for their highest good this moment in time what is with you absolutely perfect i just love the way these cards um literally come out mystic healer healing energy flows through you <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That that's wonderful. What a beautiful card. Absolutely um perfect. Just literally confirmation, you know, that the healing energy is coming through you. Um, and to those that are watching, you know, including Vivian, um, you know, the healing energies that just flow through you and it is kind of like an acceptance of it. Yes. And just go, okay, I'm accepting this now. Um, and I'm working with it. So it's really great confirmation for you um, that you, you're definitely on the right path and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Well, thank you, Ray. I so appreciate that because yes, we do get lots of nudges and lots of information, um, but that darn ego, that darn left brain can just make us question it and go, am I making all this stuff up? Am I you know, not understanding it? And it's just so much better to just try and relax and just, you know, ask our, ask our own wise self, okay, um, you know, then what's next and what's next and just to get more into a flow state with it rather than this, um, you know, resistance and to just, um, just, just feel the gratitude. Oh, that's that's brilliant wise words there. And Vivian says wonderful that you, that you found a healer. Um, yes. Again, as you were saying, it's just synchronicity. When you open up to accepting um, and looking for one, one will just come along. Absolutely, absolutely. Because yes, you just you just have to be open to it. And that was also the reasons why I trained and became a certified spiritual teacher and a Reiki master because I just needed to handle um, you know my own experiences, and I'm sure I was given those experiences to push me gently in the direction of that um, that training in those classes so that I could then help others with it because I absolutely understand um, it is it is not an easy process to really fully open um, spiritually and to uh, get that get that uh, ego uh, get that ego balanced yeah yeah and as Vivian says I should trust it yes Vivian you should trust absolutely yeah and it's it's perfectly fine i mean our our guides are to help us our higher self wants nothing other than to help us and love us and impart wisdom i mean they don't they don't get insulted or grouchy <laughs> it's, it's perfectly fine to say show me more tell me more if this is the right step please help 
you know, this become easier and just just get that flow going to it. You, you'll know if it's not the right direction because doors will start closing and it, it'll it'll just be hard and it'll just pay attention to that too and just kind of pull up. You know, don't be a bull just trying to headbutt your way through it to just, um, you know, just say, oh, whoa, is this not for me? Um, and I think you can just get more and more aligned and have more, more fun um, and just more ease to it all. Perfect. <laughs> so everyone, I hope that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Wendy has given you will help you further on your journey. So Wendy, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Oh, please go to my website, which is my full name, wendyrosewilliams.com. And you're welcome to request um, a complimentary phone appointment um, from me there and discuss how I might be able to serve you. Excellent. And I will put um, Wendy's contact details in the comments so you can go straight on to it, um, including her Facebook, Instagram and YouTube channels. So you can go and check all of those out. And of course, um, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and taking charge, um, and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to find out more each about each other and how I can help you on your journey. And of course, the Angel Wings community um, is now open where you get a chance to um, grow with Ascended Masters, Archangels, Gods, Goddesses, Angel Oracle cards and a community um, to help you spread your wings and soar. And of course, if you want to sign up to um, a free weekly newsletter for my weekly angel card reading, you get a guided relaxation meditation to help you distress and a couple of other free gifts that can help you um, in your life. And I'd like to again say thank you so much for watching. Um, and thank you, Wendy, for being on the show. And I'd like to invite everyone to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the show goes live and for the um, videos that I put on there. And I look forward to seeing you all in the same time, same place next week. And Vivian says, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, Vivian. And, and again, thank you so much, Wendy. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, and maybe we'll get you back on again next year. It would be fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Ray, to you and your lovely listeners. <laughs>